Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we are going to be learning how to do a lever bleed on a Shimano road brake. I have no ideas. <laughs> I think maybe it will just live there. I think it's just, it's just, don't do that folks. You'll need Allen keys, Shimano hydraulic mineral oil, a bleeding funnel, a bleeding funnel. <laughs> Get this bleeding funnel out of my side. And a funnel adapter widget. This is like the definition of a widget, don't you think? Probably. Yeah. Like pure widget. This is a new task for you. It is. I have done a lot of lever bleeds on mountain bike levers. I've never done one on a road bike. We don't ride a lot of road bikes. Um, but we had some questions asking if you can, and you definitely can, and we just love lever bleeds. They're a great way to make your brakes feel better without doing a full bleed. It's often not necessary to do a full bleed, so if we can apply this to the road levers, that would be great. What is the purpose of a lever bleed? Why would you do a lever bleed? What does it do? Right, so a lever bleed basically allows air that is in your brake system to, to come out of your hydraulic brake system, so that is obviously important. <laughs> important. It's important. It's an important port. <laughs> <laughs> if you have bubbles in your hydraulic lines, your brakes will not feel good. You might suddenly pull all the way to the bar, which is obviously a really crappy feeling, or they'll just feel kind of like spongy and like pulling in too far. So you're trying to get the air out of your line. Why does that, like, why would air, air in the matter for matter? Bikes. Why? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I see. We're getting technical. <laughs> so basically your hydraulic fluid cannot be compressed. So when you pull your lever, I mean, this is like very basic and probably not exactly correct, but like you pull your lever and it pushes the fluid back, which goes all the way back to the calipers and pushes them together, more or less. So if you have an air bubble in there, the air will compress. So you'll push that fluid and the air will go whoop, <laughs> And then you just won't have as much whoop on the calipers. And I also feel like depending on where those air bubbles are, it can feel kind of like erratic. And I don't know why that is, but you know, yeah. you're like, you pull it and it's fine. You pull it a bunch of times and it's fine. Like what's happening there when you pull, like if you're, you pump up your brakes and then they work. Basically, my understanding is that there's a place in here where like air can go and it's okay because when you pull the lever, it's like below the air. Mm. But if the air gets into the line, that makes sense. Then things are compressing. So you want to like pump the air up into the like reservoir where it's out of the way so that you're, it's not affected by when you pull the brakes. Okay. So should we do it? Let's do it. These are GRX DI2 levers, which are slightly different than other GRX levers. So on this one, you are gonna pull here. So go ahead and pull. Oh, you wouldn't do that on the other GRX levers. I'll show you. So here you pull back and then Right to there. Yeah. there is your bleeding screw. Okay. Let's show what it looks like on other mm, brake levers, yeah. just in case like people these have. These guys are not, like my bike is not. Yeah, or even these ones would be fine also. So on here, so this is a GRX non-DI2. So instead of going from that side, you do not go from there. Oh, we you don't, don't do, do this. That. We do not do this. <laughs> we do something else. You pull Ooh. off here. Oh, I don't like doing that. It hurts my fingernails. Oh, okay. There so she is. you oh, see the port. That's actually kind of convenient. Yeah. So I just wanted people to see that, sure. like, depending on which lever you have. And we don't have any position. actual road. These are all G gravel GRX ones. I don't know where like the. I'm pretty sure on DI2 road, it's the same as the DI2 gravel and on mechanical road, it's up here also. So the reason we're doing this is that we just installed these levers. So we had to take apart, take the brake line out of the brake, put it back in, which is a great way to get air into your brakes. Yep. So when you install brakes, not always, but like 90% of the time, the last final step is a lever bleed. So I think we should all just take a moment to roast Mackie for the condition of his bar tape. And the fact that after taking the bar tape off to install the new levers, he had me put the same bar tape back on, <laughs> which I feel like is basically the equivalent of like putting dirty underwear on after you shower. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's gross. So, I don't really know where this adapter comes into play, but I'm guessing step one, just like on a mountain bike lever, is to take off 
practically part screw with your tiny Allen key. I feel like this is kind of a bummer that this isn't sitting. Well, that one well. There goes the lead That's part. how you do it. <laughs> step one, unscrew. Step three, throw across the room. <laughs> step two doesn't what exist. What was step two? <laughs> There's no step. Okay, so That's looking step in there, you can see a little bit of fluid. Um, it's like down there. But it's pretty far down, so. It could be worse. Yeah, it could definitely be worse. Okay, so then we've got our widget, which we now know the proper name for is widget. <laughs> this is like dirt in here, which I feel like is not good. Yeah. Well, why there's dirt in there? I don't know. There's also cat hair in there, but we know why there's cat hair in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is not a mystery. Yeah, start with things clean, and then you won't introduce contaminants to your brake system. Never done this before, but it's like pretty obvious. So this is the screw that you can strip if you tighten it too much. But we're not going to. We're not going to. Is that enough? <laughs> <laughs> I was so trolling you. Catch. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't mean it wasn't supposed to fall. Mackie <laughs> always falls for being trolled. This By you. Right into yes. my chest. <laughs> I do. It's okay. true. So now that we've got this on here. Oh, you know what? I want to kind of rotate the bike up a little bit. So what is your goal? What are you going for here? Like, why did you adjust the bike? Well, you want the air goes up. Mm -hmm. Like if you fart in a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> so we want the whole line to be below the um, funnel. Yeah. So, so basically the, comes up the goal up. is that any air goes from here and then up to the funnel. All right. We're pouring sideways because someone gave me a hard time for not pouring sideways last time. One thing. I've learned nothing. It's to put the top back on stuff like this. Yeah. Because brake fluid everywhere. Is we actually not haven't great. done that. That's one we haven't done, but like haunts my dreams. Because we had this olive oil incident once, and I feel like this would be like that, but more toxic. Yeah. What happened with the olive oil? I was looking for a snack in the van. Mackie hit the brakes erratically. We were driving. I did not hit the brakes erratically. <laughs> there wasn't. A, you had to hit the brakes I had for to hit some the reason. Brakes. It was not erratic. A glass bottle of olive oil shattered all over our van. It was bad. Do not recommend. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Oh, okay, there's a big a bubble, bubble right there. Yeah. And then we're gonna pump the lever. Yep, just like oh, mountain bike brakes. There it goes. Oh yeah, there we go. Just like farting in the hot tub. <laughs> All right, so you do this until no bubbles come out. Just like in our mountain bike lever video, if you see a bunch of black stuff, like if there's like a cloudy black thing, that means it's probably time to do a full bleed because that means that your oil is black and dirty and gross. In addition to checking for bubbles, what else are you going We're for? going to put this back in. That will definitely, but like, how do you know when you should stop pumping the lever besides bubbles? When it feels good. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, you're, what you're going for is good brake lever feel so that it feels like it like hits an end point and you can tell it's catching. Because we had a couple questions about this last time. You don't need to put a bleed block in. You don't need to take off your wheel. You can do this as it's, which yeah. is great. That's what makes it a very nice technique. Why do you not need to put in a bleed block? So it's the nice. reason that people say like, oh, you should always like take your pads out and push the pistons out and put a bleed block in is because otherwise you are quote unquote overfilling the system, mm. which technically you are, but at the same time, this is what like every Shimano mechanic we've ever yeah worked with totally. does like people do lever bleeds you should do a lever bleed it works well but when you go to replace your pads when you push the pistons out to replace the pads you want to make sure that you open up this port and either attach a funnel like we have here or just like put a rag there to catch excess fluid as you push the pistons right. out so that's it so you're overfilling the system but it's what makes the brakes feel good so unless you're replacing your pads every single time well right and you want your brakes to feel good as they wear exactly through, right so i think that's kind of a silly thing if you put the bleed block in then you'll just have air in the system again basically totally right so because you're pushing the pistons all the way out and the you just need to be warm. aware of that when you change your pads yep. basically we're pulling we're, no, we're putting this back in put that back in hold on i already did but i'll do it again for the people there we go make sure she's okay. in there nice so oh well, there's gonna be quick. full in the funnel it's widget. gonna be full in the widget. Yeah. So what you can do, paper towel. Paper towel. You hold this. But also, if you release the, if you unscrew the funnel, 
I'm sorry, if you unscrew the widget with the funnel still attached, it's less likely to drip out because the top is sealed, so it sort of creates a vacuum and holds oh, really? in place. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, well. Yeah, you see how it didn't really drip out, so it's still in the bottom of the funnel, or the bottom of the adapter. And if, since you're doing a second one, just set the whole thing on top there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, okay. I still have a but thing like, you would, you. But you do put that back in at the end, unless a bunch of black stuff comes out. As this one was super it... clean because it was new, and we're doing this because we cut the brakes. Yeah. So like, it's good to go. Totally. But if it's like, then... Yeah, you definitely don't want to reintroduce contaminants. It's the 3.75, look for your faults. <laughs> so what I like to do is have a little paper towel ready for this because it's gonna go around, go places. These hoods are kind of a pain in the patooki, I'm gonna lie. Definitely feel like that adds a just like logistically challenging element. Yeah. But this works fairly well. Okay, I didn't do a good job catching this because it was busy. Here, maybe I'll use this hand, do that, and then I'll turn this with my mouth. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think we're good. Okay, there actually not that much came out. We're fine. We don't tighten that too much because the stress is macking out. All right, so that is literally, that is the thing. We did the thing. Now we're gonna do it four more times. Are you gonna show the trick for getting the hoods back? Instead of mm, like yeah. peeling from here, push from the, like, you basically want this part to go first. Like shove your thumbs down the sides. There you go. It would look great if you didn't have the world's jankiest bar tape. <laughs> <laughs> you look chagrined. <laughs> Um, you well, look guilty is what you look. Yeah, it turns out these things are slippery. It's got some fluid on it and um, might have dropped the widget into the middle <laughs> <laughs> Yes, happening. look, the widget. I have no ideas. <laughs> I think maybe it'll just live there. I think it's just, it's just... Don't do that, folks. And this is how to do a lever bleed on a Shimano road brake in one minute. The first step is to figure out where your bleed screw is and pull the hoods out of the way so you can access it. Make sure your funnel is clean and then remove the bleed screw and attach the funnel adapter and funnel. Situate your bike so that the funnel is at the highest point so any air in the system will flow up to the funnel. It's like parking in the hot tub. Fill the funnel about halfway with mineral oil. Now remove the plunger and pump the brake lever until no more bubbles appear and the lever feels firm at the end of its movement. Reinsert the plunger, unscrew the adapter and funnel simultaneously and reinstall the bleed screw while using a paper towel to catch any excess oil. Now reinstall your brake hood. As long as the fluid in the funnel wasn't contaminated, feel free to pour it back into the container. Just make sure not to drop the adapter in. Thank mm -hmm. you.